Okay gang, let's take a look at the distance formula. My guess is you've seen this before, but maybe it's been a while since you've seen it, so we're gonna review it. So if I have a point, P, with its own x coordinate and y coordinate, which we'll call x sub one and y sub one, and I have a second point, R, with its own x and y coordinate, we'll call x sub two, y sub two, um, if there are two points on the coordinate plane, the distance between P and R, which your book likes to write as D, and then in parentheses P to R, I usually just write it as the letter D for distance. I'm good with your book's notation. But if I wanna get the distance between these two points, here's the formula for it. So we will do the square root of the x, the difference in the x coordinate squared plus the difference in the y coordinate squared. And this is an application of the Pythagorean theorem. All right, if you remember the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, this is basically us solving for the hypotenuse uh, and square rooting both sides of that equation. If you feel like it, just Google Pythagorean theorem distance formula and you'll see all sorts of proofs of this pop up. All right, but the directions here say find the distance between the points three, negative five and negative two, eight. Okay, now before we do that, I just wanna do a quick little sketch of them to get some feels here. So here's what I mean. Let me just do my own little quick and dirty graph. All right, if I went three, negative five, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. All right, and then negative two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so if I did this, all right, three, this was eight, we're going negative two. If we take a look at it, And I'm just gonna guess, and I'm not the greatest drawer, but I wanna get some ideas. If I was gonna guess this distance, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, maybe 14 and a half, right? So I've just tried to count the same units, um, the same units that I did to label and scale my x-axis. And again, I'm drawing this by hand, so I'm not entirely sure. So right now, my best guess is my distance is about 14.5. I'm gonna put the little approximate symbols because, because I don't know, right? This is a hand drawing. There's, it's gonna be riddled with error. That's okay. I just, I know the distance isn't two units. I don't think it's five units. I don't think it's 10 units. I think it's closer to 15, 14 or 15 units. So that just give me some, gives me some gut feelings in terms of the number that I should get back out here, right? I should get a number closer to 15 or somewhere in there. All right, so let's use the distance formula. Now, it doesn't matter which of these you call x1, y1 or x2, y2. So you can call this, if you want, you can call this one x1, y1 and this one x2, y2. Or you could flip flop it. You could call this one x2, x1, y1 and this one x2, y2. It doesn't matter the order that you go in. And the reason it doesn't matter the order is because you're gonna subtract those two x coordinates and square that difference. And once you square that difference, whether this difference was positive or negative, it's gonna to square to the same number. But I'll show you that it doesn't matter um, which way we go. So let's try it this way first, and then we'll take a look, okay? So if I do this, if I'm gonna go x2 minus x1, I'm gonna subtract the x coordinate, so I'm gonna get negative two minus three, I'm gonna square that difference. I'm gonna to add to that y2 minus y1. And you gotta be a little careful when you subtract those because you're subtracting a negative number and you have some nested parentheses. Okay, so if I look at this, I have the square root of negative five squared plus this would be 13 squared because eight minus a negative five is actually 13. All right, this turns into the square root of 25 plus 169. And when I add those two numbers together, I get the square root of 194. All right, now I thought it would be around 14 and a half. So let's just check in on our graphing calculators. Um, oops, let me get that cleared out. That was from the last time I used the calculator here. Um, so I have to do the square root of 16, or not 16, the square root of 194. So let's start to talk about how your calculator is programmed via Texas Instruments. So if you look at this x squared button, let me move this up. If you look at this x squared button here, you'll see a little square root symbol over it. 
but it's got blue coloring. So if I want to activate that button, I need to hit the blue button first and then the X squared sign. So if I turn my calculator on right now and I hit X squared, you'll just see this little squared thing pop up. It's going to take my last answer and square it. If I want the square root symbol, I hit the blue button and then that button and you'll see the square root symbol pops up. Now one thing I do want to mention because it'll, it'll pop up at some point in the semester. If you'll look right now, I've got a, a, a rectangle, a solid rectangle flashing. And I mention that because let, let's just take a look at one of these buttons. Since it's in view, I'm going to take a look at this one. So when the rectangle is flashing and I hit this, you see the negative one show up for the reciprocal. Okay? Now, if I hit the second key, I'm going to hit the blue button. Watch, watch this rectangle. When I hit this, do you see it turned into an up arrow? So whenever you see the up arrow, you know the blue key has been activated. Now if I hit this button again, it's not going to give me the reciprocal key. It's going to take me into my matrices. All right, so then I'm in the matrix. All right, and we're not going to go into the matrix. I just want you to see it. All right, if I ever want to go back home, right, if I don't want to deal with the screen, hit second and mode to quit out of this. So if I'll hit second and mode, it'll take me back home. Again, take note, I've got a rectangle, okay? Now, just watch, if I hit the alpha button, if I hit the green button, do you see that that turns to the letter A? That means the alpha key is locked or is activated. Now, when I hit that reciprocal key, I get the letter D. Right. So you, you can see that for most of the keys in here, there are actually three functions built into them. There's the reciprocal key that's labeled on the actual button. There's the matrix, and then there's a letter. All right, so that's how Texas Instruments has, has messed with all of these. So let me just review real quick. If I have the rectangle flashing, just like you're in regular old normal mode, if I hit reciprocal, it'll do the reciprocal. You see X to the negative one or my answer to the negative one. Okay, let me clear that out. If I hit the blue key, I see the blue, I'm sorry, I see the up arrow. If I do this, I get into my matrix, okay? And we're not gonna use our matrices in here. Now, if I, if I ever wanna leave a screen, like if I find myself in a screen and I'm like, oh no, I gotta get out of that, think of second in mode as like the Apple home button or, or your iPhone's home button, or I, I'm not sure what the, the Android version would be, but if I hit second in mode, I'm quitting out of that. And again, if I hit alpha, we can see the A showing up and I get D there. All right, that's all fine and good. I need to still get to the square root of 194. So I'm gonna hit the second key because my square root button is right above that x squared key. So I'm gonna hit second and x squared and let's type in 194. And when I hit enter, okay, I thought 14 and a half, this is 14. So I wasn't too far off. So what do we have? 13.928, so let me write that down. So this is approximately 13.928, great. All right, now I wanna rework this where what it would have happened, would our answer have differed if I had called the first point x2, y2, and the second point x1, y1. So let me try this now. I'm gonna say this was x2, y2, and this one is x1, y1. I want you to see that regardless of what you call x1, y1, and x2, y2, you're gonna get the same answer. So I'm gonna move this up so I have enough room to show all of this, okay? All right, so let's take a look at this one now. So I'm gonna retry this, and we're gonna go distance will equal, all right, I'm gonna take the difference of the x coordinates. So here I'm gonna go x2 minus x1. So I'm gonna go three minus negative two. I'm gonna be careful of those nested grouping symbols and then I'm gonna do negative five minus eight. All right, now when I square this, I'm gonna get the square root of five squared plus negative 13 squared. And you can see I'm getting the same numbers, like their, their absolute values are the same, five and negative five and 13 and negative 13. So they're the same distance from the origin. It's just that this is on the left side of the origin, this is on the right side. Right. right side, left side, but when you square it, it all those negative symbols go away. So I still get the square root of 25 plus 169, which is the square root of 194, which we just said was 13.928, and that was close enough to my approximation. And the reason I wrote approximate here is because this radical is the exact value. 13.928 is a decimal approximation because really the decimal keeps on going, right? Forever and ever. All right, so with that, 
We've got our distance formula down, so now let's pick up the midpoint formula. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.